Hello and welcome to this episode of the program from the State Assemblies, a weekly program that reviews legislative activities across the nation. On this episode, correspondent X-rays the journey of the Nassau State Assembly since inception. Lagos State Assembly held a national discourse on Nigeria's 25 years of unbroken democratic governance. Plus, Akwa Ibom Assembly intervened in the congestion of correctional centers in the state. Details of these and many more stories will be coming your way shortly. I'm Joshua Okujide, your host. Welcome back as we begin from the North Central, where the Nassau State House of Assembly shared with us the challenges and successes in lawmaking, quality legislation, and resolutions of the House since its proclamation in 1999 by the first civilian governor, Abdullah Adam. Adams at the cadre is standing by to take us on the journey of the Assembly since its inception. On June 6, 1999, the first session of the National State House of Assembly was proclaimed by the then first civilian governor of the state, Abla Adamo, with late Musa Atayo Agwe, PDP Kana constituency, elected as a pioneer speaker of the first assembly. No doubt, the Musa Agwe led assembly laid the solid foundation for the smooth takeoff and rerun of the assembly and the state under Governor Abla Adamo as it passed 33 days into law. 137 resolutions from 1999 to 2003. Notable among the bees in the four year regime of Musa Agwe were the bees establishing Nasara State University Cafe, Nasara State Protecting Lafia, School of Nursery and Midwifery Lafia, and School of Health Cafe to enhance education and health of the citizenry. Although originally the composition of the house has 24 elected members, but during the first assembly in the state, Two members that were supposed to represent Toto Gadabuki and Umasha Uja, or in total local government area, were not represented due to inability of Aine to conduct election in the area as a result of communal crisis between the Ibera and the Baasa, leaving the first assembly with 22 members. The second assembly was inaugurated on June 6, 2003, with member representing Doma North PDP, Mohamed Ogoshi Onao elected as the speaker. Ogoshi Onao, the present senator representing Nasara South, during his regime as the speaker of the Second Assembly, passed 20 bills into law. This include the Child Rights Act as well as 71 resolutions within the period of his four years for consolidation and good governance of the state. Whether one likes it or not, the legislative setup is an important branch of government that without it, uh, the executive arm of government cannot function properly. The present Accountant General of Nasara State, Musa Hamid Muhammad, was the Speaker of the State Third and Third Assembly respectively between 2007 to 2015. The first four years period was under the late Alu Akweduma, while the last four years, 2011 to 2015, was during the first tenure of Governor Humal Tunkwal Makura. However, the relationship between the Fourth Assembly donated by PDP with a CPC Governor Tonkwal Makura was not cordial, which led to an impeachment move. <laughs> On the Governor, but the House contributed a lot to resources of the state as the regime of Musa Hamid Mohammed PDP Nasra Center passed 76 bills into law with 138 resolutions within eight years. One outstanding legacy of the administration of Musa Ahmed Mohammed was that the state assembly which started at Lafayette Local Government Secretariat to the Ministry of Local Government during this period was moved to its present permanent site at Shendon Road, Lafayette occupying an edifice that stands the test of time. Furthermore, on the 9th of June 2015, the 5th Assembly was inaugurated with member representing Umar Shah Uja. APC Ibrahim Balarib Abdullah elected as the Speaker. 
the Balarib Abdullah led Fifth Assembly succeeded in bringing the much desired stability in governance. To further consolidate on these gains, on June 10, 2019, the Sixth Assembly was inaugurated and Balarib Abdullah APC Umar Shawija was re elected as Speaker for continuity, consolidation, and progress of the first tenure of Governor Abdullah Sule. Those who are saddled with responsibility are abusing that responsibility bestowed upon them. We are not going to draw a conclusion. We must give them an opportunity to be heard. The Assembly under his watch have passed the highest number of bills into law since the creation of the state, with record of 121 bills in eight years. Aside this, Balaraba Abdullah breaks record in the history of the state legislature as he emerged speaker for the third time when the seventh assembly was inaugurated on July 21st, 2023. Although his third time speakership regime lasted for only five months due to Abuja Api court ruling that nullified the Balaribe's election as member representing Umasha Wuja constituency. The emergence of Dalla Dijato as speaker of the seventh assembly with Muhammad Ademo Oyaki, PDP Doma not as a deputy speaker on Friday, 1st December 2023, was another historic moment in the history of the house. Jato, a third time ranking member of the state assembly, was elected unopposed to be the fifth speaker of the house. The development many described as putting the right peg in the rank O, considering its antecedents, experience, and humanity, as its emergence was unique, special, and natural. My colleagues, it is my hope and belief that what our predecessor did. Balarabe, right Honorable Balarabe, that cooperation that you have given to him, I also expect it from you. The present 7th Assembly Deputy Speaker, Mohamed Ademo Oyaki, is one of the youngest legislators in Nigeria and the youngest the House ever produced, having been elected about the age of 25, which demonstrated youth inclusiveness. The National State House of Assembly, since its inception 25 years ago, has produced only two female legislators, Mary Owonguru, from Nasara Igon East constituency, and she served for only one tenure. Then the present Seventh Assembly produced Ajara Danyaro Ibrahim, APC, from Nasara Central constituency. In a nutshell, the Nasara State House of Assembly has been in existence for the past 25 years from 6th June 1999 to date. Constitutionally, it is a house of 24 lawmakers and this is the seventh section of the state assembly and has produced five speakers so far with two female legislators. And in the southwestern Nigeria, the Akiti State House of Assembly reaffirmed its commitment to qualitative legislation that will have positive impact on governance and the people of the state. This was the submission of the legislators at plenary to mark the first legislative year of the seventh assembly. Ayodeji Ugushake reported that the state governor, who was at the plenary, acknowledged the cordiality between the executive and legislature, which has kept the state moving. Since the 7th Assembly of Ekiti State House of Assembly came on board on the 6th of June 2023, the legislators have not left anyone in doubt of their commitments to good legislation and other oversight functions. One year down the line, the Speaker Adewi Yaribasu noted that the House of Assembly has performed its duties through the required legislature, ranging from lawmaking of and on plenary duties. These activities of the Seventh Assembly, the Speaker said, are obvious through passage of about 15 bills into law, several motions and resolutions, coupled with legislative judicial functions for the overall benefit of the state. One year of harmonious relationship, not only among us as members of the Constitutional Assembly, but also among the three arms of government, most especially the executive and the legislative arm. It has been a one year of, like I said, innovation legislations that, are, that impacted the life of educated people. It has been a one year of greater achievement. As you can see yourself, you will know that our the seventh assembly is not just assembly of perfection. It has been an assembly 
of exports. Other members of the House appreciated God for the journey of one year of legislative activities and reassured the people of the state of good legislation in the years ahead. Times that the assembly are several steps for perfection. And I want to say that, Mr. Governor, this assembly has not only been able to complement your good works, it's actually a perfect assembly. I want to commend my colleagues, my fellow parliamentarians, a array of uh, innovations that have been brought to legislation in this House of Assembly. I want to inform the whole world that we in the South, we are pleased with the leadership of uh, the right honorable speaker, uh, right honorable Stephen and Dewey and Ibasui. The state governor, Biodun Oyibanji, expressed delight at the achievements of the assembly in the last one year in office, saying the cordiality the executive has enjoyed is having great impact on governance in the overall interest of the state. I can state that without revocation, that the same assembly has been very exceptional in the legislative duties. The assembly is organically cohesive, characteristically mature, and progressively oriented. There were messages of commendation from dignitaries with a challenge to the lawmakers not to rest on their oars so as to build strong legacies for the good of equity. There were presentations of awards to some former speakers of the House and personalities for their outstanding contributions to the state. For Nigeria to sustain democratic governance, the legislative arm of government must remain a beacon of hope for their constituents and serve as an alternative dispute resolution mechanism for effective dispensation of social justice. Speaker, Lagos State House of Assembly Mudashiru Obasa stated this at a national discourse on Nigeria's 25 years of unbroken democratic governance in Lagos. Musa Toliat has the details. Since Nigeria returned to democratic governance in 1999, several efforts have been made to nurture democracy at all levels of government. This national discourse, organized by the Lagos House of Assembly, is aimed at appraising the 25 years of uninterrupted democratic governance in Nigeria and the role of legislative assembly to sustain civil rule in the country. We must continue to promote democratic values, protect human rights, and ensure that our democracy remains perpetual and broken. I solicit for support for legislative institutions, particularly state houses of assembly throughout the federation to further deepen democratic values in the state, promote protect democratic institutions and entrench representative government in our grassroots. The need to set the record straight on federalism, economic perspective of democratic governance, understanding Nigeria's foreign policy in a democracy, as well as the role of women in nation building were discussed. Nigeria is not a federal state, it's a unitary state. But I disagree with that they are wrong. We are a federal state. It's multi-level law enforcement. That was absent, and I'm happy that the matter of state police is now on the table. Again, we are making progress, in my view, towards a more perfect union. And the importance of this second leg of democracy is about having due regard for investors in the economy. Building an economy that is inclusive, getting the private sector involved in policy making, getting good feedback from them getting their inputs in the process of regulation and whatever we are doing in order to sustain the confidence of investors in this economy. Foreign perspective on Nigeria's democratic governance and relations with the international community was also accommodated. Nigeria's democratic resilience and significant influence in West Africa can serve as an example to other nations seeking to strengthen and protect their own democracies. The intellectual discourse soon paved way for the celebration of Nigeria's 25 years of unbroken democratic governance. Here in the federal capital territory, NT Parliament interacted with some informed Nigerians on the commemoration 
of the 25 years of unbroken democratic governance and their expectations going forward. An election was held on the 12th of June 1993, and there was a clear winner, Chief M.K. Abiola, the military regime at that time, who had made several promises to return Nigeria to civil war, then truncated it, annulled the results of the election, and then subsequently General Babangila resigned, and then we had Shoneko and General, late General Abacha. And there were a spiral of events that happened thereafter. One of it was that there was an agitation for the restoration of the mandate freely given by Nigerians, which did not happen and could eventually led to the death of Chief Abiola. But it was the insistence of a return to civil rule, civilian rule, and the insistence of Nigerians that there was a winner. It was that pressure that led to when General Abusalam came, that he said, okay, I'm now going to return Nigeria to civil war. So without the events of June 12, without the agitation for the mandate to be rest restored, we won't be where we are today. So it is what uh, celebrated. But more importantly, is that we've had 25 years of a broken civilian rule for the first time in the annals of the history of Nigeria. So why won't we celebrate? We must celebrate it. And we must not only celebrate it, we must recognize the people that fought for the restoration of the mandate freely given by Nigerians on the 12th of June. We've had, um, you know, six electoral cycles. We've had an alternation of power between political parties. I think that um, generally on this Democracy Day, there's a lot to celebrate. Even though we're not there yet, we have a long way to go. But at the same time, we've covered a lot of grounds. Our democracy is maturing. We're democratizing because it's a journey and not a destination that you get to when you say, oh, we've attained democracy. We're democratizing. There's a lot in uh, the body policy that um, still needs a lot of correction. Uh, and I believe it's a, a joint effort that will continue to achieve that. Some other advanced democracies like America, US, like the UK, and some other advanced. If how many years have they practiced democracy? You will be hearing that uh, a state in the United States was created 1880 something, 19. I mean, as far back as now. But how old are we as a country? How old is Nigeria? We got independence in 1960. Yes, we had teething issues, teething problems. But look at us here. There were times we were describing our democracy very nascent. You know, it was just new. We we're using that in the media every day, every time that is a nascent democracy. But we have endured. And by the grace of God, look at where we are. Yes, like I did say, we've got our challenges. But then, they are not, we are not overwhelmed. The thing is that democracy, it's a, a process, like I said. And we are taking, you know, into consideration some of these imagined challenges, imagine needs, imagine problems, and we put them in place to serve Nigerians, to serve humanities. That is what we're doing here. And so we cannot in all honesty say that, yes, well, our democracy is not worth celebrating. It is worth celebrating in all ramifications, in all aspects, in all spheres of it. And we are grateful to God. And we are grateful to our leaders as well. Yes, we're all learning. Leaders will come, leaders will go. Some of them will come and then they may not do well. Some will come, they may do well. But there, there are aspects we can take from them, even though it may not be, you know, rosy, totally, completely. You get? So we, we are excited and we, have, and we still want to enjoin our leaders to take the process of nation building very seriously. Bring the people on board. It is not a personal thing. You are leading a people for greater goal. And that greater goal is to make Nigeria a beautiful country, a beautiful nation. And not just to develop us so that our, the livelihood, so that the standard of living can be very well high and appreciated. But right now, yes, things might be wrong. But then, it doesn't, we have not lost hope. All hope is not lost and we have not given up. And we cannot give up. We are continuing. And by the grace of God, we will get there. It is uh, important for us to um, always come together as a people and look beyond those primordial sentiments, those divisions, you know, the ethnicity, the religion, and all that such, um, you know, 
other such things. I think those are more of the things that are responsible because we can never come together to hold our leaders accountable. And where you're not holding your leaders accountable, you only get what you see, it's what you see that, what is, that you get. So I feel that there's so much to celebrate, but it is hinged on us working together. We need to come together as a people and work, hold our government accountable and get the kind of life we deserve. May 29 is usually our previous days that we celebrate Democracy Day, but now June 12. June 12, that is the signal that the June 12 of the past that seems to be uh, forgotten, uh, that turns to be like a trouble point in our democracy period, has now been corrected. June 12 is now being taken as the date for Democracy Day telling us or telling people that might not know much about the past of June 12 that June 12 is recognized. Uh, the election of that period is now taken as real election. Nigeria is still at peace. We are not in war or not at war with anyone, though we have uh, security issues internally. But at least if you check Nigeria of three years, four years ago and Nigeria of today, uh, you discover that uh, celebrating and uh, democracy day what uh, celebrating some might say no but in terms of uh, internal security issues that nigeria was having previous years and uh, now you discover that there are a lot a little improvement in certain area areas and uh, in terms of uh, physical infrastructure that we're having there are little improvement. You're watching the program from the State Assemblies where we review the latest development in the legislative engagement of 36 State Assemblies in Nigeria. We will now go on a short break. The program from the State Assemblies returns shortly with more reports across the country. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. From the South South, reports reaching us within the week on the review indicated that the Akwaibom State House of Assembly moved to the congested correctional centers in the state. This followed a motion by member representing Oruk Anam constituency, something Idiong. Musikak Okon reports. Ms. Idiong says the over congestion state of the correctional facility, aside contributing to rapid dilapidated facility, also drains government's revenue. The lawmaker says an independent survey has revealed that Uyo prison that was originally built to accommodate 600 inmates now has over 1,500 inmates. The eco Recreation Center, he further says, was designed to accommodate 800 inmates, is currently accommodating twice its capacity. More warriors, if the state government continues to wait on the federal government as well begins to come, the consequences may be disastrous. Concern that if that of us and inmates which are predominantly acquired escape, it is in the indigenous and residents of the state, not the federal government that will suffer the consequences. Most of this 
state government passed on more of us later to direct the state direct government committee to provide solar power security light around the correctional centers in the state and also build a century post in the new center. The Speaker, Kwaibom State House of Assembly, Ude Moto, directed the House Committee on Public Utility and the Committee on Judiciary, Justice, Human Rights and Public Petitions to interface with the Judiciary Service Commission. I am to the motion and therefore this motion to the Committee on Public Utility first interface and see exactly what is happening. Then... The House also received a motion on the need to address critical challenges facing private and public health care delivery in a Kwaibom state and is sponsored by member representing Ikorobasi East Nobolo State Constituency, Selena Opatu. Make it mandatory for every MK to bring up its public and private to make it fairer of any case beyond their capacity. Still from Akwaibom State, the House of Assembly approved a six-month extension of tenure of local government transition committee chairman, as requested by Governor Umo Eno. This is sequel to a report by the Chairman House Community on Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Ufom Idong. Mr. Kakokon again tells us more. The House Committee Chairman Fon Idung says most of the Transition Committee Chairmen have done well in the judicial use of funds allocated to their councils and express satisfaction with their performances. Well, it was a very good judicial government council that leads the council to the inception of the internal administration by the government. That are some of the chairmen and members in all the local government councils of the state we last we remained a rise agenda of excellency, the governor doing the revisions of capital projects, personal development and maintenance services. The deputy house leader Otto Bon Bob also speak. This is not a blanket resolution thing we can put on them. The legislature has the right to drop whosoever he feels is not performing. Reacting, the Speaker Kwaibom State House of Assembly Udemotong directed the Clerk of the House, Nsika Robong Orok, to communicate the resolution to the State Governor. The committee recommends that this House approve an extension. Of the interior and local government systems pending the conduct of investment into the local government council. Those in favor of say aye, those against say no. Aye is having accordingly, the recommendation is hereby adopted. Also at the plenary, a bill for a law to establish the Aquibom State Consumer Protection Agency provide for the protection of consumers' disputes and for connected purposes pass through second reading. In Undo State, Southwest, the State House of Assembly committed the bill seeking the establishment of a management board for secondary schools in the state to the House Committee on Education for further legislative process. If you or Moshele reported on these and other activities on the floor of the House. At the plenary session presided over by the Speaker Olamide Oladiji, the lawmakers warmly welcomed the executive bill seeking the establishment of a board for the management of secondary schools in the state. The motion for the second reading of the bill was passed and seconded allowing legislators to discuss its merits. Several lawmakers voiced their support 
emphasizing the need for comprehensive transformation and development of secondary schools in the state, commending the bill as a crucial step towards achieving this goal. So if you go to secondary school, we know no state presently, no, no staff room, no library in most of the schools. The few ones that we don't have the structure, no teachers. So by the establishment of this uh, board, I think uh, a new leaf. I know we are going to turn a new leaf in the state, and our education will experience a great development. The supervision will be total, and at the same time, the evaluation. There's going to be a, 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 a strong way of evaluating the performances of the active player in that sector. Following the debate, the bill was committed to the House Committee on Education for detailed scrutiny and further legislative action. If passed, the bill aims to ensure discipline, enhance supervision, and address existing gaps in the secondary education system, ultimately improving service delivery. In another significant development, a private member bill sponsored by the Parliamentary Secretary Munyo Long Rogunwu Miju titled a bill for a law to prohibit forceful entry and illegal occupation of landed properties, violent and fraudulent conduct in relation to landed properties in Ondo State passed its second reading. Ogun Omiju and other supporters of the bill highlighted the pervasive issue of land grabbing in the state, which has resulted in significant financial losses for many residents. Um, the bill, uh, another aspect of the bill is that it's going to protect landowners from dubious agents. Agents uh, where uh, in our communities we have noticed that some agents come and sell properties to two, three different uh, people. Um, these agents are a menace to the society. Our right to succumb to the bill with a majority of the source of the honorable member, the motion has been moved and duly seconded that the law prohibit, prohibit forcible entry and illegal occupation with other properties, violent and fraudulent conduct in relation to landed property in all those states and for the purpose connected there with those AI, those against it, I have it. Thank you, Honorable Member. The underscored the urgent need for legislative measures to curb the activities of land grabbers. The lawmakers expressed optimism that the passage of the land grabbing law would put an end to such illicit activities, thereby promoting lawfulness and unity within the state. Meanwhile, concerned by recent cases of vandalism and theft of public assets, especially road furniture and iron barricades on overhead bridges in some parts of Ogun State, the State Assembly called on ministries, departments and agencies of government to put in place measures to secure public assets and utilities across the state. Correspondent Yemi Dalima reported on these and other engagement of the lawmakers in this package. His report. Lawmakers at plenary while observing with dismay the ongoing vandalization of public infrastructures in the state charged the citizens to be more vigilant and report cases of vandalism of public property to security agencies. The Speaker, Oluda Isi Elemide, while responding to the submission of member representing Abekuta North State Constituency, Babatunde Tela, admonished the people to embrace attitudinal change and desist from such unpatriotic acts which he doted were inimical to the development and progress of the state. And we have spent so much billion on this road and it's become an albatross to our people. So Mr. Speaker, maybe for the last time, this house needs to call on the Commissioner for Works to as a matter of urgency make a visit to this spot and put up an immediate mayor to control this unnecessary and incessant term. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, I want to believe that in future, 
we need to pass a bill or on such on such thing, on paralysis of public utilities in the state to show the seriousness of this legislative chamber on such activities. I say sorry. Let me just send this to our security outfits and the MDAs that are involved in taking care of our properties to please and please and please wake up to action and live up to their responsibilities. And let me implore the members of public that government uh, property is our property. We should not feel unconcerned. When you see something, you say something. And let me plead with our youth and people that we can call unscrupulous elements. So please desist from this type of action. It is one Nigeria, all hands must be on deck, and we should be ready and prepared to build this nation and not to destroy it. The lawmakers also congratulated the Ulu of Ilaru and Paramount Tula of Yewa Land over Ken the Ulu Bene on his emergence as the new chairman of the Ogun State Council of Obas with prayers for a prosperous tenure that will usher in more progress, peace and tranquility in the state. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Public Accounts and Anti-Corruption, headed by Damilari Bilu Mohammed on oversight of the local government administration, hosted the chairman and management team of Shagamu local government where the records of the local government were scrutinized with the aim of ensuring transparency, accountability, and blocking revenue leakages in public administration. That report concludes the review of activities in the state assemblies. Remember, you can still watch our news and other programs on our social media handles scrolling on your screen. Let's do this again next week. I'm Joshua Kujide. Thanks for watching and bye for now.